Hello guys, today I want to tell you what to avoid in your Laravel migrations to avoid one specific hidden unexpected bug. So when working with migrations and with foreign keys, you may want that field to be nullable. So maybe some users would not have any roles. And this syntax is okay. So according to the official documentation, there's foreign ID constraint. And as a typical migration behavior, you can of course chain the methods. So do constrained and nullable, right? But that would be wrong. And even my PHP storm underlines that. So the correct behavior is if we scroll down to that documentation, there are column modifiers like nullable and others. And the documentation says they must be called before the constraint method, not after. And even my PHP storm autocomplete, if I do that here, it offers the nullable. If I do it after constraint, it doesn't have autocomplete. Null only, null on delete. There's no nullable for a reason, because constraint gives a different object. And the problem with that, the biggest danger here, is that it would not fire error. If you do it this way, the migration will still succeed. So if we run the migrations now, I will run my great fresh because I have some data in the database already it will succeed. So adding role to the users does not fire any error or exception when running the migrations. But in the database, in the list of the tables, users table is empty, of course. And if we take a look at structure, we have role ID, but it's not nullable. Is nullable? No, as you can see in my table plus. So migration succeeded, but didn't execute what you are expecting. And this is exactly the problem because if you made some mistake, you expect the framework to cause some exception or show you a bug. But in this case, it's not the case, which is dangerous because if then you try to create a user, for example, if we go to artisan tinker and do something like user create, or actually let's use a factory for that factory, which doesn't have role ID and then create, or let's specify role ID as null specifically, just in case, so it would be visible, role ID null, and then it would throw the error, column role ID cannot be null. So in other words, you run the migration, you deploy the project, deploy the changes, and then your users of your application would find out the error and would see some 500 internal server error or some kind of error page, and you would have trouble. So to avoid all of that, just remember to have nullable and other modifiers before constraint. What are those other modifiers? Let me show you in a minute. So this is the correct behavior and other column modifiers. If we click in the official documentation, they are these after auto increment default, for example, is widely used. So for example, if you want to do default one, roll one, again, you need to do that before constraint and not after. I hope you learn a lot from these quick tips like this one on YouTube in five or 10 minutes, short videos. But if you want to dive deeper into Laravel knowledge by topic, I have a lot of courses on my newly relaunched laraveldaily.com. You can find a lot of courses and you can subscribe to the membership and you will then also support this YouTube channel and I will still continue shooting free videos for you daily here. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.